You may be seated. We want to get into the word. Hallelujah. God has brought us to the knowledge of the word of his kingdom. And he says the mysteries of the kingdom are for those who are being discipled by the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. In Matthew 13, hallelujah. Verse 10. The disciples asked Jesus, why do you speak to them in parables? Why do you uh, speak to them in parables? They knew that the things that Jesus taught in the public wasn't as plain as it was said. Come on, somebody. They knew because oftentimes they would come and ask him, explain to us the parable. Come on. And you know, I never saw a note with the multitude asking Jesus, explain to us the parable. But his disciples did. That's why he said, the, the mysteries of the kingdom is for you. You see, those who desire to know will know. Come on, some. Those who are those who desire to know will know. They will pursue and they will seek to find out what are these mysteries about the kingdom of God. Because everywhere Jesus went, he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Come on. Everywhere he went. Matthew 4 verse 23 tells us that Everywhere he went, that was what he was preaching. Yes, persons were being healed and miracles were taking place, but all the miracles were there to confirm the authenticity of the word that he brings. It is God putting his signature on the message to say, I approve this message. And that's where the word of God says, he went about doing good and God was confirming with signs and with wonders. And it said in Matthew 4, verse 23, that Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues. What was he preaching? The gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of what? Sicknesses and all kinds of diseases among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments and those who were what demon possessed epileptics and paralytics and he healed them and he what oh come on somebody he healed them and also in Matthew 9 verse 35 you see also he says there Jesus went about all the cities all the what the cities and villages teaching in their synagogue. He didn't went just for some religious ceremony. He's, an, he's a man with a mission to declare this message, the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease what among the people. Now, we, of course, there are still people who were left sick, uh, who did not come, who did not believe on him. But all who came and believed were healed. Come on now. All who came and believed were healed. Praise God. Because if you remember one episode, Jesus went by the pool where there are many there who are waiting to jump in first. They say, when an angel come and stir up this water. Huh? And they, they say, anyone who steps in first will be healed. No, sir. So what happened to the rest? <laughs> Come on. Is anyone who steps in first will be healed in the water that the angel came down at a certain time and stirred up. That is in St. John 5. Just look at it till you see what I'm saying. In verse 1 to verse 4, it says, Now there in Jerusalem, after the, this, there was a feast of the Jews. It said that Jesus went up to Jerusalem now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool which is called in Hebrew Bethesda having five porches 
In this lay a great multitude, a what? A great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for what? The moving of the water. Didn't they know there was Jesus who was healing people? Why are they waiting on water to move? You see what I mean? Right, so he said, they're waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at what? A certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, whoever stepped in what? First, after stirring up the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. Just by an angel stirring up the water. Come on now. I'm talking to you. Come on now. And what happened? He says, now there was a certain man was there who had an infirmity. How long? 38 years he was there with that infirmity. 38 years. No, I'm sure. Jesus been around quite a while, but <laughs> he he died at 33. You understand? So, so this man must have heard of Jesus. But what, he didn't come to Jesus. He's depending on his food. At 38 years, you know, he's there. He's in that condition and depending on what would happen for him there at that pool. Come on now. 38 years he had that infirmity. And when Jesus saw him lying there, and what? And knew he had already had been in that condition. How long? A long time. Jesus said to him, Do you want to be made well? Sound like a foolish question, eh? Do you want to be made well? Then why is he here? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> huh? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. And he's been there a long time. Come on. And Jesus said to him, Rise, take up your bed. And walk. Come on. Now. And immediately what? The man was made well. Took up his bed. And walk. And what? That day was the Sabbath. Hello somebody. Give me some more there. I love to see them thing there. Yes man. The Jews therefore said to him. The man who was cured. It is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. And he answered them, He who made me well. Who? The one who made me well said to me, Take up your bed and walk. And he didn't tell me, Wait till the Sabbath over. Uh -huh. He says, then they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? For the one who was ill did not know who it was. Why? For after Jesus said that to him, he withdrew himself. Come on. For Jesus had withdrawn and a multitude being in that place. He cannot recall them. Who was it who spoke to me? I never get a chance to ask. I only know I got a command. Grace was released to me to obey the command. And I got the miracle. Come on, somebody. Huh? So afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, what did Jesus say? See, you have been made well. You have been what? Now, weren't there other people at the pool that was sick? Paralyzed?
eyes all kind of disease and but this one man was healed by Jesus out of them all at that pool that day what happened to the rest oh you better hear what I'm saying to you he says see you have been made well what the Lord said to him sin no more Huh? What that you say, man, Jesus? Sin no more in the sinful world? Yes, that's what Jesus is saying. Sin no more. What's the warning? Lest a worse thing come upon you. Come on, somebody. What was upon him was upon him for 38 years. And the Lord said, if you see from sin, this will not come on you or anything worse. Come on. I said, if you, that thing that leave you, if it come back, <laughs> it's not coming back the same way. It's coming back with some company. And it's going to be far worse than before. Come on. So the man departed. When the man heard that, what the man did? He departed and told the Jews that what? It's Jesus who made me well. No, he's not just made me well. But he's the one who told me to take out the bed and walk. On this Sabbath day. So he went back and told them. He says, for this reason then what? The Jews persecuted Jesus. And sought to kill him. And sought to what? Kill him. Why? Because he had done these things. On the Sabbath. Huh? But Jesus answered them. My father. Who? My father has been working. Until now. <laughs> Come on. He said my father not taking no rest. You might need one but. He doesn't sleep or slumber. He says, my father has been working until now. And what the Lord said. And I have been working. Come on, he's saying, is what I see the father do. <laughs> that I'm doing. Come on, somebody. Huh? Look what it says. Therefore, the Jews what? The Jews sought all the more to kill him because what? He not only broke the Sabbath but also said that God was his father making himself equal with God. Come on now. Hello. Not way, if you're saying God is your father then. You and God of the same kind. Come on. You're making yourself equal with God, man. And you deserve to die. But Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you what? The Son can do nothing of himself but what he sees what he what what he sees the father do for whatever he who is the he whatever he the father does the son also the son what also does in like manner come on they also is speaking of company. 
and he's saying he does it in that way too you know so hallelujah he says for the father loves the son the father what loves the son and does what and shows him all things that he himself does and he will show him what greater works than these that you may marvel Woo! glory to God what a mighty God we serve hallelujah 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 and he's saying I can do nothing of myself but what I see the father do that's what I do come on hello somebody and if he's the father how you calculate that one how you reason that one out he can't do nothing of himself but it's him same one is the father I tell you, some people they want to write their own Bible. They, they need a pen. Hallelujah. And some people to write their own version and name a church of it. Hello. But we want to follow the head of the church here and follow what he's teaching because say, those who love him keep his word. Come on now. They are not going to treat his words lightly. Or exchange his word for other words. <laughs> that change the description. Or how it is prescribed. Come on. Hallelujah. How it must be used. Glory to God. So you got to understand. God wants you. To know the truth. But how will you know the truth if you don't believe what Jesus said? Come on. I say, how will you know the truth if you don't believe what Jesus said? And some need to take some time to examine themselves on that. And see if you really believe what Jesus said. Or do you choose to believe what you want to think he said? Or think what he meant by what he said? Rather than to first accept what he said. Then you can think on what he said. But you must first accept what he said before you start to think what you think he said. Hello, otherwise you will stray from the truth. And we want you to know the truth. Hallelujah. Because the last time I checked, lies does not set people free. Hello, somebody. Persons may lie and think they get away. But the word of God that is truth says all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Come on. You cannot really escape or find salvation through lies. Hallelujah. You find salvation through the truth. Jesus is declared as the truth. Huh? Did he say, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father, huh? except through me. If it is through him, is it him? Come on. Don't you hear what he's saying to you? Come on. And if he then said, 
that in St. John 14 verse 6 and then he says now he'll pray the father for you to receive the spirit of truth he prayed the father for you to what it's because he said I'm leaving you but I'm not leaving you comfortless I'm not leaving you without company to assist, mentor, and care for you. While I'm gone to my father. Is he lying saying going to a father? When is him seeing one? Come on. You must accept truth. He says in John 14 verse 16. He said to his disciples. I will pray the father. So what he was doing? Praying himself. I will pray the Father and He, does He say me? No, He will give you another helper. If He says another and He is there helping them and He says I'm going away but I'm praying to the Father to send you another. Is Him same one? You must accept what He said. Before you can think on it and say you get further revelation. Come on. He said, He will give you another helper that He may abide with you forever. Oh, come on now. Because He, Christ said, I'm leaving. But He says, He. The spirit of truth will remain with you forever. Uh, so the spirit of truth is who? The Holy Spirit. Now what did he say there in verse 17? John 14 verse 17. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Did Jesus say the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit? All right. Let me just make it clear. Who said it? Jesus. Now, Jesus said, the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit. Can the world be saved? Is anybody saved without the Holy Spirit? I want you to understand what Jesus said. I don't have to add nothing to what he said more than just read what he said. Because what he said, the Holy Spirit, I know he's still declaring the same thing. What he said. Come on. Hello. Come on now. So he says, the world cannot receive the spirit of truth. Why? Because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. Who knows him? Jesus' disciples, the ones who speak to there, who is discipling. He says, Why? For he dwells with you uh, and will be what? In you. So there's a with you and there's an in you. He was not yet in them, but he was with them. And Jesus said, there's coming a point when now when he'll be in you. He'll be what? Aha. Uh -huh. That is the point where they're truly becoming as sons of God. Because without the Holy Spirit, they are not yet sons. They are power to become the sons with the Holy Spirit. But until he resides in them, they are not. Huh? And that is in Romans 8, verse 9. Paul made that statement. If the Spirit of Christ doesn't dwell in you, that's the Spirit he's speaking about. You are none of His. Come on now. Hello. He says, You are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed what? If indeed the Spirit of God 
that's the same one you say i'm praying for you to have that he dwell in you and be with you forever the spirit of god dwells in you we are in you now if anyone does not have the spirit of christ he's not his he is not his come on somebody hello so can the world be saved without the holy spirit and if jesus said they cannot receive him any amount of prayer you pray gonna save them hello all right not at all now do you understand why when jesus prayed in john 17 jesus says i pray not for the world oh did oh, oh some didn't remember he said that all right saint john 17 verse 9 jesus is saying i pray for them who is the them his disciples and what he says next i do not pray for the world what? come on jesus show pity on the sinful world for god's soul of the world <laughs> no the lord know the state of the world those who have rejected the word have rejected the holy spirit and those who reject the holy spirit cannot be holy they cannot be saved watch this he says i pray for them that's his disciples i do not pray for the world but for those whom you have given me jesus says those who what who has god given him those are his disciples why he said why does he pray for them he says for those who have given me they are yours they are yours and all mine are yours and yours are mine and i am glorified in them lord have mercy come on somebody how is he glorified in them by their bearing fruit their obedience to the word and to the leadership of the holy spirit develops and equips them to walk and live as children of god hello no one can live as a child of god without the word of god and the holy spirit of god no one is holy without the holy spirit there is no such thing as a holy sinner that's why christ came to save us from our sins and not with our sins huh now that don't get a lot of whooping and hallelujah but it surely will transform your life to let you understand when you apply the word it will produce that life in you it's not about your feeling and goosebumps and feel fire shut up in your bones you must live the life come on somebody if the spirit of christ is in you the life of christ must be displayed through you hello somebody and so he says then if christ is in you that's what paul said all right it's in romans 8 verse 9 to 11 
Romans 8 verse 9 to 11 says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. What's the condition? If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. He used, Paul used the word to these believers, if, because many will say, yes, he dwells in me. But then when you see how they live, you say, eh, eh. That's not true. No, sir. So he says, if the Spirit of God dwells in you, for he said, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, what is his position? He is not his. Come on. And if Christ is in you, what happened? The body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is what? The spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead, what spirit raised Jesus from the dead? The Holy Spirit. Or would they say Jesus raised himself? Uh -huh. He says, if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, which is the Holy Spirit. He who raised Christ from the dead will also, will what? Oh, that's company. Will also give life to your mortal bodies. This body you have. Is not when we all get to heaven and have that glorified body. He says, the life of that Holy Spirit will show in this mortal body. So if it is showing in this mortal body, can this mortal body experience that life of holiness? Yes! That's why that Spirit is given to you. Come on. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will what? Also give life to your mortal body. Through who? His spirit who what? Where is he dwelling? In you. Come on. Remember, there's a point he was telling his disciples. The Holy Spirit is with you. Huh? The Holy Spirit is what? With you. But now he's telling them that this Holy Spirit is in you. Come on now. The with is different from the in. The with speaks of how Peter denied Christ. And after he denied him, and he heard the cock crow. He was he brought back to his memory, his remembrance, how Jesus said to him, You will deny me thrice before the cockroach. And then he wept bitterly about it. Felt convicted. Felt wounded in his spirit over what he did and regretted it. But that was after. But when the spirit was living in him. Did Peter ever do anything like that? Come on now. The record is there to show that in Acts 4, they were threatened, imprisoned and beaten, and told not to go out and preach in this name. In the name of who? In the name of Jesus. And Peter told them, and apologetically that he says in verse 18 they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus but Peter and John answered and said to them whether is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God you judge for we what? We cannot but speak the things which we have seen 
and heard. Come on, somebody. He said, We have to testify and to declare the truth. Come on, somebody. Hello. Is that sounding like he's mincing words and saying what he feel? No, he's declaring what he know of a certainty that Jesus revealed to him that there is power in no other name. Huh? So they would want him to just say God because today people would say all of us know God. Many ways to God. You might know him as this, we know him as that. And you might call him that, but we call him this. But I see him God. Uh -uh. Peter said to them, there is no other name. Come on. There is what? Ah, uh -huh. look at it. From verse 9 to 12. Peter said, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to an helpless man by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth whom you crucified whom God raised from the dead by him this man stands here before you whole and this is the stone which was what? rejected by you builders which has become what? The chief corner stone. Hallelujah. And what does he say now? Peter says, Nor is there salvation in any other. Come on now. There is salvation in what? Any other. For there is no other name. It's the name he's talking about it. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So where are the others come from? Come on. And now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. Come on. Huh? So they did know Jesus. <laughs> and seeing the man who had been here standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Huh? Come on now. But when they had commanded them to go aside, out of the council they conferred among themselves saying what shall we do to these men yeah I know they're planning for that long time what we're gonna do with this apostle Fagan over here this loud boat man on the block uh, you don't you know, feel it yet hallelujah yes what shall we do to these men for indeed that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all. Is what? In other words, everybody sees it already. It's not in hiding. Evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it, but so that it spreads no further among the people let us what severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name ah, hello so that's when they called them and commanded them not to speak at all nor teach in the name of Jesus but Peter and John said to them whether it's right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God. You be the judge of that. 
for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Come on, somebody. Huh? Isn't it clear that despite all who have been trying to drag down this name Jesus in the mud, all who have been trying to mar his character, say all man of evil against him and his followers, the church is still moving on. Praise God. And despite all the persecution, all the martyrdom and all those they have sought to abuse and hurt and make their way difficult, the church is still moving on. Oh, can I talk to somebody? Despite all they're doing and saying against the church, the church is still moving on. There is still one head to the church and he is Christ come on he has appointed other shepherds to lead in his church but he is still the head of the church he declared I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it what you say so no matter what men do oh my god you need to know the god we serve can i talk to somebody he's still defending the message and the message is still being declared repent for the kingdom of god is at hand god declares that all creation must come in alignment with his word and with his Holy Spirit. And he is expanding his family through his word and his spirit. Those who are born again are born of the word and his spirit. Are born of what? The word and the spirit. It means Christ and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Must dwell in them. You notice from what we read in verse 9. It says, if the Spirit of God dwells in you. And then it says, if Christ, the Spirit of Christ is in you. Come on. The Spirit of God, and it says, the Spirit of Christ is in you. For he said in verse 10, if Christ is in you. So he's talking about the Holy Spirit being in you. And Christ being in you. And Christ is the word of God that became flesh and dwell among us. Come on, somebody. And he said, the word of God must have an abiding city in you. And so must his Holy Spirit. And if the word and the Holy Spirit abide in you, it will produce a holy life that is committed in obedience to God and his purpose in your life. Come on, somebody. So you won't be playing around, messing around and hoping, say, you make it because God merciful. Uh -uh. He will give you new life. He will give you what? Glory to God. Is there new life in Christ? Oh, yes. Paul said those who have been baptized in him have been baptized into his death. And his burial, they are partaking of his resurrection that they may walk in what? Newness of life. Come on. Huh? That's Romans 6, verse 3 to 4. He says, Or do you not know as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus? Were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism, that just as Christ raised from the dead by the glory of the Father. How did Christ raise from the dead? By the glory of the Father, and he's still by the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Huh? He says, even so, we also should what? Walk in newness of life. Come on. Is not 
getting a new page so you can sin again, but you can rub it out. Uh, tear up that page and get another new page. Uh, uh, he says, this is new life because of who is dwelling in you. Because of what? I was meditating on that this morning. Greater is he that is in you. What is that? Greater is he that is what? In you than he that is in the world. And I know it had to do with the Holy Spirit and Christ being in you. Come on. Come on somebody. And he said if he is in you no matter what the opposition they will not be able to break you and bring you down in the mess with them because of the one who is abiding in you. My God, I'm glad he's abiding in me. Because the devil is trying all kind of tricks. Getting way desperate. Going to such extremes to get people away from the Lord. Hallelujah. But I'm glad I'm not just with the Lord. But the Lord is in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he's deeply rooted in me. And I'm deeply rooted in him. Glory to God. Come hell and high water. I know who I am leaning on. I know who I'm depending on. I know who lives in me. My God, when flesh will rise up and create a tantrum and go on, but there is greater one living inside. To say, hold it, boy. You know who you are and whose you are. You can't live like the rest of the world because of the one who is living in you. Huh? Glory to God. And I know he's living in me. And I was meditating on that how Jesus kept saying to even his disciples, don't you believe that I am in the Father? And the Father's in me. Glory to God. He's, he, he had to emphasize it over and over to them because he said, you, you must believe that I'm not operating of myself. Oh, come on, somebody. But the great one lives in me. And that's why no matter what the devil comes with, he cannot win. Glory to God. Because the great one lives in me. Glory to God. And I tell you, when you allow the word to marinate in your spirit, and allow the Holy Spirit to work that word in you, no devil, no weapon formed against you. Ah, oh, you better hear me today. No weapon. And I tell you, the Lord didn't say it wouldn't be formed, but he said it would not prosper. Come on, somebody. And I know that what God has begun in me is way bigger than me. Glory to God. And I stand confident that he that began a good work in me, he's faithful to perform it. I'm not worried about tomorrow. What tomorrow will bring. Because the same God yesterday is still God tomorrow. And I'm confident that he's more than able to do exceedingly. Uh, and abundantly. And above all, I could ever think of or imagine. And I rest in the arms of God. I'm not worried about the future because I know the one who holds the future got me in his hand. Glory to God. What about you? It's time to get that relationship going with the Lord. You have been putting it off too long. You've been having it on the side burner too long. 
it's time to make it your main objective come on somebody it's time to put off all the excuses it's time to put off all the wavering and the procrastination and the punting between two decisions come on it's time for you to stop being double-minded and be focused on giving the lord your all come on can you give him your all oh yes so why not today if not today when there will never be a day that seems like it is convenient enough to give it to the lord but you must begin somewhere and he says today is the day of salvation he says today if you hear his voice harden not your heart so many have hardened their hearts on their way to a devil's cell because of pride arrogance and stubbornness refusing to yield self-will and self-centered refusing to give way to God's way and God will not have it God is saying there's a time that all those who rebel and resist and continue in their way will be cut off and that without remedy and you don't want to be in that number but God is no respecter of persons there's no partiality with God you've been given time and time again to get it in order you don't know when will be the last time you don't know how much more time you have left what will you do with this Jesus hallelujah will you say release Barabbas and crucify him again or will you say release Jesus give me Jesus hallelujah though the world may scorn him mock and jeer him and say all manner of things against him will you stand with that Jesus many say they'll just say to the Lord forgive me I'm a sinner like the thief on the cross but they need to remember the thief on the cross demonstrated more faith than you he demonstrated faith in Jesus while Jesus was on the cross with him he never saw Jesus raised from the dead he never heard of that but he believed he said to Jesus when you come into your kingdom not if you come when you come into your kingdom remember me that man had faith in him that man said in the noise of the crowd where there wasn't one praise being given to Jesus he said we deserve this but this man doesn't deserve this come on somebody he spoke up for Jesus in a violent crowd can you say the same come on can you say that though he was there he didn't beg for his life to be saved that Jesus would come off the cross and save him like the other thief did but he said when you come into your kingdom remember me and Jesus said to him I surely I say to you today you will be with me in paradise glory to God many are waiting for the world 
waiting for those in the world to approve them to make this decision waiting for friends loved ones for things for position for title huh waiting for qualifications money my god but will those save you it is jesus who saves he will save his people from their sins he will what he will save his people from their sins and you cannot be saved with sin glory to god but in christ you are a new creation hallelujah what a privilege that this messed up boy hallelujah with misuse and abuse done our manner of things that are too shameful to mention but look what the lord has done and you are thinking oh he's only saying that to get people in his church but i don't care which church you got all i'm telling you you all must be on the altar come on somebody is your own on the altar of sacrifice lord your heart does the spirit control you can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest when you yield them your body and soul come on paul says i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your bodies a living sacrifice how holy and acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service and he says be not conformed to this world oh god almighty do not play with its customs and be molded and shaped by their practices because it's tailored by the devil to get you away from god but he says be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you will what you'll prove that good acceptable and perfect will of god come on stand with me i believe god wants us to meet that standard paul says that jesus is like that husband that loves his wife as he loves his own body and he's washing her with the word to present her what a glorious bride to himself without spot without wrinkle or any such thing come on somebody god wants you to serve him like that will you do so today come on somebody huh lift those hands and worship god hallelujah it's time to give it all to jesus oh hallelujah hallelujah oh shama say thank you jesus is your all on the altar come on come on somebody worship him in the room does the spirit control are you still being ruled by the flesh 
Have you submitted to the Holy Spirit? He wants to lead you in that life of holiness. True fellowship and communion with the Holy Spirit brings you in fellowship and communion with His Son, Jesus Christ, and His Father. Come on. Whoa. Hallelujah. Sacrifice laid. Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield your body and soul. Come on. You have long for sweet peace and for faith to increase. You have earnestly fervently prayed. Oh. But you cannot find rest nor be perfectly blessed until all of the altar is laid. Come on. Here's your own on the altar of sacrifice away. Come on. Your heart does the spirit control. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield your body and soul. Come on. Would you walk with the Lord in the light of his word and have peace and contentment always? Oh, glory to God. You must do his sweet will to be free from all ill and you're all on the altar must live hey, is your own on the altar of sacred come on somebody your heart does the spirit Glory to God. Yeah. You can only be blessed and have peace and sweet rest as you yield your body. Whoa. Come on, give it all to Jesus. Is your on the Come on, give me the Jesus to me. Your heart, your heart, does the spirit control. Good God of mine, you can only be blessed in her peace and sweet words as you yield your body. And so, oh, oh, we never can know what the Lord will bestow. Oh, the blessing for which we have prayed. Oh, glory to God. Till our body and soul. He the fool 
leave control and are all on the altar is laid. Come on, somebody. Hey, is your on the altar of sacred? Come on, you gotta know your heart. There's a spirit control. As you hear oh my God, oh. who can tell all the love he will send from above, and no happy our hearts will be made. Oh. Glory of the fair old ship sweet We shall stare at his feet When our all on the altar is laid Come on somebody praise him It's your room Hey Somebody give it to him That's a spirit control. Hallelujah. Hey, you can know. Leave me blessed. And her peace and sweet rest. As you yield. Whoa. Come on, as you yield. Come on. As you yield him your body, oh, 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 as you yield him, come on, your body and soul, each one must learn how to possess the vessel, come on, as you yield him, your body, from the depths of your heart, give him your own. As you yield your body and soul, come on, give him the praise in here. Thank you, Lord. You will never know what it is to give you our all until we give you our all. And you have so much more to give us than what we have to give you. But you're waiting on us to give it all. Thank you for waiting for us. David said, teach me the number my days. My God, my God, my God. That I'll apply my heart to wisdom. Come on, Lord. We don't want to waste the opportunity you have given to us. But use it for your glory. As John said, what privilege, what a blessing. What a marvelous thing. That we should be called children of God. For you have never said to an angel, Today I've begotten you. You are my son. I'll be to your father and you'll be to me a son. So you said it to Christ and to us who are in Christ. Thank you for granting us access. To become a part of your family. To your word and your Holy Spirit working in us. You're preparing us for that great reunion. And 
and all the family in Christ. Hallelujah. For he brought together as one. And we will be with you forever. Thank you for granting us such favor. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being so mindful of us. When we weren't even mindful of ourselves. My God, but for making such a way for us. Thank you, Lord. I pray grace over those who heard the word today. That you will blanket them with your anointing. And every fear, every insecurity and anxiety and stress and depression from this life. And oppressive spirits will be broken in the name of Jesus. Irreparably damaged, sent back into the pit from where they came from. That grace and favor, your grace and favor, will surround us like a shield and administer peace to our spirit. Peace to our innermost being. Victory in the name of Jesus. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Yes, Lord, that every mountain, every blockage and hindrance the enemy has set up be torn down now by your presence and your anointing. Strain our innermost being with strength from an eye to stand and have it done all to stand. Oh, Rabba Bosharama said, You are still the same God, and I know you will never fail. And you want us who embrace your word and spirit to never fail again. But to stand and be counted as children of the Most High God. Royal priesthood, peculiar people, holy nation. Thank you, kings and priests unto God. Ministers of the Most High God. That you will be glorified in us, O God. Whatever and wherever the enemy has find access in our lives. Ho, ho, Shema. Chop it off, Lord. Seal that breach in our position with the blood of Jesus, with your anointing and your presence. Saturate us in your anointing now and cause us to rise to new levels. Of fellowship and communion with you through your word and your Holy Spirit we give you the praise and the glory we pray that everyone that bears some sickness or infirmity in their body now will be healed in the name of Jesus you said healing is the children's bread but even the crumbs that fall from the master's table even the little dogs do eat your healing is so much in the house that even outsiders can receive the, from the overflow that is in your house. Glory to God. And I pray grace will be released that those who are sick and oppressed and diseased, having all kind of chronic conditions that seem immovable and irreversible, that your presence and anointing will give them a miracle today. Hallelujah. That your glory will show up right now. Hallelujah. And every sickness and disease will be cured in the name of Jesus. Out of that body. Hallelujah. Out of their lives. Your quickening spirit. Hallelujah. will take charge now. 
Hallelujah. And rise up and overthrow every plan of Satan. And give them the victory that belongs to them in Jesus' name. Come on, give God the praise for that right now. I say give God the praise. Give God the praise. Give God the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Clothe us with your presence. Saturate us in your anointing. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Oh, I'm emotional. We humble ourselves before you release more grace. For you give it more grace. Hallelujah. Grace to the humble. Oh, Shamasa. Thank you, Lord. Ramamasi to Roshini. Come on, praise him in the house. Yes, Lord. You know what to do, Lord. Ha ha. Ibo Shalamasi to. He cast every care on your feet. And we worship your most holy God. Great and mighty are you, Lord. Ah, Yibo Shama. Who is like you, God? Unveil your glory upon your people right now. Shine in our hearts. Shine upon us and through us. Yibo Shama, sir. Your glory, oh God. Glory of your presence. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, receive it right now. Hallelujah. Unlock those doors. Lord. <laughs> Release that miracle. Release that breakthrough. In the mighty name of Jesus. Divine overflow. Yekebo shamasi in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. He came Rosha Massa. He bowed before you. He came Rosha Massa. And we celebrate you, Lord. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you, Father. We honor you, Lord. Worthy of the praise and the glory. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Go shatter, I must Take over, Jesus. Oh, Shemasa. Make the crooked path straight. Make the rough places smooth. Intercept the plan of the enemy. Overwrite, overturn, and burn. Kibo Cause the enemy to go and retreat now. In the name of Jesus. Crush them under our feet now. Crush them under our feet. Crush them. Make a spoiler of them. In the name of Jesus. Ha ha ha. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, oh glory to God. You know what to do. And we put it in your hands, Lord. And with you all things are possible. And we believe for it. We believe for it. Come on, we wave those hands to the Lord. We believe for it, Lord. We believe for it, Jesus. We believe for it about Father. She can see. Holy God, righteous. 
perfect in all your ways, glorious and excellent, wonderful are your works. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, Father. Thank you for everything that you're doing now and for what you're about to do. We give you praise. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. And we count it done right now. In the name of Jesus. Somebody give him the praise. <laughs> Somebody give him the praise. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Whoa. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Glory to God. We're going to reach it now. A little bit over our time, but give you a chance to sow as the Lord has laid upon your heart. And while you're doing so, I give the final word to those who are watching online. We want to get out of here before the rain goes. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Are those who are watching online, you're watching Increase in Faith Deliverance Ministries International. We are 3 East Street, Montego Bay, Jamaica. I'm Apostle Richard Fagan declaring the gospel of Christ and his kingdom. I wanted to know the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And I believe that those who are connecting with the word recognize that God has more to unveil to them of the gospel. And the more we believe in the gospel, the more we receive of the gospel, the more spirit man is being built up in the Lord. Paul said, though an outward man perish or inner man, he's been renewed day by day. It's the word of God doing its work through the spirit in us. Hallelujah. And one day this, this poor, this, this tent, as Paul described it, this frail body, hallelujah, will be changed from mortal to immortality. Praise God. And that day is coming. And God is preparing us for this very thing. But we must allow him to have that rule within us. In our hearts. Amen. Praise God. And surrender all to him. Praise God. So we had a book released at Amazon.com. It's called The Gospel of the Kingdom. Subtitled The Gospel that Jesus Preached. You can order it online by going on Amazon.com. Type in the search box. Richard B. Fagan and the book will come up. And of course, you can order it anywhere around the world through Amazon.com or download it through Kindle to your device. Tap it at your convenience to read. Hallelujah. To build up your most holy faith in the Lord. And also, we have more teachings in the house. We've been declaring it for over 20 years. So we have teachings in the house that are live stream. You can just send a friend's request to Richard B. Fagan. On Facebook, you'll be plugged into our five live stream services each week. This is one of them. And of course, you'll be taught more in the Word and build up your most holy faith in the Lord to have a deeper fellowship and communion with Him through His Holy Spirit and His Word. Amen. And we wanted to get to that high level, not becoming complacent and not easy in Zion, but moving to new heights and having new depths in the Lord. Because the devil is coming more vicious as the days go by. And you must be surely rooted and grounded. As we just said, work out your salvation with fear and with trembling. Knowing, hallelujah, you must make your election sure. Glory to God. Don't be guessing on this. Because eternity is a very long time to be guessing. <laughs> and having regret over what you should have done. But you have time to do something about it now. Praise God. So we want to encourage you to do just that. So you can send a friend's request to Richard B. Fagan on Facebook or look for Apostle Richard Fagan on YouTube and subscribe. See, so we added more scripture to the live stream there. We also have a love gift for those who are plugging into the teaching at one daily teachings. We have what we call our daily devotional. 
So a love book gift to those who ask for it. You can actually ask through the number on the screen. Just send a text to the number and we'll send it to you back by WhatsApp. It's day-to-day -day teachings from the 1st of January to the end of December 2023. Day-to-day -day teachings that are put in devotional packages. Hallelujah for day-to-day -day teachings and day-to-day -day lessons in the Lord. It will keep you molded and really anchored in the faith in the Lord. That is good. That's our love gift to you. You don't have to buy anything or send any money to get that. You just need to request it. If you want to still send money, you can send it to our website. Our website is increasingfaithintl.org. That's increasingfaithintl.org. And those who have been blessed by the ministry can sow to the site or can connect with us there, send your praise report, your, your, your prayer request on the comment box. We'll connect with you by faith and see together as we connect our faith together what greater works the Lord will do. Amen. And we are looking to see and hear greater report as we move forward in faith. Amen. Praise God. So if you have any further questions, you can call me Richard Figan at 876-839-9390-876-557-2427. All information is on the screen. You can just contact us up here. Do whatever we can to help you to grow in the Lord and be anchored in the faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless the Lord. We bless today. Hallelujah. It's time to release you. Hallelujah. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord open his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Come on, give the Lord the praise in here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Be strong in the Lord. The power is might until next time. Bless you all. Praise God.